For centuries, banks and organizations have been at the center of what we know of as centralized finance. As with almost anything, the goal of banks and organizations is to make money. Amongst other things, they facilitate the movement of money between parties and charge a fee for this service. Using blockchain technology, decentralized finance, or DeFi, sought to end the use of intermediaries and the charges associated with them. As with any new technology however, there's always room for improvement. And in today's video, we're breaking down the second generation of decentralized finance. Today, we're talking about DeFi 2.0. Welcome to Crypto Sketch 101. We're the number one go to spot for all things crypto, and we're glad you've stopped by. If you love cryptos as much as we do, please give this video a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel. In today's video, we're breaking down decentralized finance 2.0. We'll start off by taking a look at what makes DeFi different from centralized finance and then dive deep into what DeFi 2.0 is, and the areas that it hopes to improve upon from its predecessor, DeFi 1. There's a lot to cover, so let's get into it. In today's world, centralized finance is embedded into almost everything that has anything to do with money. Banks, organizations, merchants, and even yourselves, play a part in this system. Almost every transaction comes with a fee or a charge. This charge or fee is usually paid to a bank or organization that acts as an intermediary that helps facilitate the transaction. Decentralized finance seeks to eliminate these intermediaries and allow people, merchants and businesses to conduct transactions directly with each other, and in doing so, eliminate the fees of the middlemen. DeFi is a breakthrough blockchain technology. But as with any new system or technology, there's always room for improvement. For all of the wonderful things that DeFi 1.0 has brought us, it's not without a few shortcomings. These shortcomings are what DeFi 2.0 hopes to improve upon. Let's take a look at some of them. The first point of concern is liquidity mining. DeFi protocols can suffer from a lack of long-term, practical incentives for liquidity providers. One typical issue with liquidity providers is that they routinely withdraw both their allotted resources and rewards once they are eligible or when a more competitive protocol with a higher APY becomes available. A diluted supply is often the result of these periodic and capitulated sales of a protocol's native tokens on the market. Scalability also becomes an issue. Data congestion is common on DeFi platforms that undergo high periods of network traffic. Transactions are slowed and network fees rise as a result of these obstacles. Centralization Simply put, in order for DeFi platforms to provide higher levels of security and scalability, many of them will sacrifice decentralization. Security is another issue. The majority of users are unaware of or unable to manage the risks associated with DeFi. They stake millions of dollars into smart contracts that they do not completely understand. While security audits are in place, they tend to lose their value as upgrades are made. DeFi 2.0 hopes to take the successes of DeFi 1.0 to the next level while minimizing or even eliminating many of the shortcomings. To address liquidity, some of the DeFi 2.0 movement's pioneers are focused on developing methods for long-term liquidity. Olympus DAO, for example, is a protocol that intends to build a decentralized reserve currency. The system offers a discount on its native token, OHM, by using a bonding mechanism that distributes the discount to buyers over a five-day period. Users can purchase OHM using assets such as DAI and Ether, as well as liquidity provider tokens that represent trading pairs that include OHM. This is how Olympus DAO is able to control its own liquidity. According to reports, Olympus DAO now owns over 99.5% of its own liquidity. Tokimak, another DeFi 2.0 project, takes a different approach to the problem. Every crypto asset in Tokimak is held in its own pool, called a reactor. Meanwhile, holders of TOKA, the protocol's native token, act as liquidity directors, voting on where liquidity should move to. Tokimak intends to establish a decentralized market-making protocol with this concept. With regards to scalability, in today's DeFi 1.0, Ethereum as a base layer has caused settlement to be incredibly slow and fees to be extremely high. 
Transitioning decentralized apps to alternative layer ones such as Solana, Luna and Avalanche help solve some of these scalability issues in DeFi 2.0. There are also Layer 2 Ethereum solutions like Arbitrum that can help to alleviate some of the scalability issues. These alternatives have a higher transaction rate and cheaper fees than Ethereum's base layer. In DeFi 2.0, decentralized autonomous organizations are used to combat centralization. DAOs are community-run organizations with no central authority. They are completely autonomous and transparent. Smart contracts establish the ground rules and carry out the agreed-upon decisions. At any given time, proposals, voting, and even the code itself can be publicly audited. DeFi 1.0 has emphasized security for its users, nevertheless there's still room for improvement. Many of DeFi 1.0's risks stem from the fact that many DeFi users don't know how to effectively manage risk. DeFi 2.0 focuses on designing protocols that are more user-friendly, especially in the areas of user interface and user experience. As a result, individuals are better able to assess risk. It's worth noting that even though DeFi 2.0 seeks to improve upon areas lacking in DeFi 1.0, DeFi 2.0 is not without some risks. Many of those risks are some of the same ones shared with DeFi 1.0. Take compromised smart contracts, for example. A smart contract's security and safety are never guaranteed by an audit. As a result, it's critical that consumers perform as much layered due diligence and research as possible before investing in a protocol. Government regulations can also be an issue. Projects and platforms may need to alter regulations and services to satisfy changing laws and industry standards as governments and regulators become more interested in DeFi. While governments and regulations can provide more stability and security, they can also have an impact on decentralization. There is also liquidity risk. It's important to remember that the dangers of liquidation can be lowered but not eliminated entirely. Even though DeFi 2.0 aims to shield individuals from liquidity risks such as loss, liquidity miners may still lose some funds. Lastly, as with any investment, there is investment risk. Investing in any financial product is always a risk, and decentralized applications built on DeFi 2.0 are no different. DeFi 2.0 may expose consumers to investment risks, as smart contracts in the new era may contain flaws. As a result, before investing in any project, investors should conduct extensive research. And that's all we have for today's video. We hope you got a better understanding of DeFi 2.0, and some of the improvements it hopes to make over its predecessor. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for joining us and we hope to catch you in the next video.